Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're on the Columbia River at Bernita trolling for fall run Chinook salmon. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. We're on the Columbia River on the Hanford Reach near the Verdita Bridge, targeting fall king salmon with Mike and Jill Roth of Team Takedown Guide Service, along with Bob Schmidt of Max Lure. You like the chartreuse pink combination and then you're pairing up the UV with copper, it looks yep, like? Yep, yep. And then that one there, you're doing green and green? Yep, so this is kind of a little thing that I've played with with the new flashers, because the, the new flashers are only in two colors, basically just your um, your UV and then the green. And then I've played with putting some of Max Lure's tape on them um, that people probably could purchase and that they could uh, try it, you know, little, just something a little different. Yeah. Get some trapeze chips for me. Right. So that is Max Lure's new scent line um, that Procure does for them. Um, this is the Garlic Plus. It's a little bit different than Procure's regular Garlic Plus. Has a little bit of Max Lure's own kind of own uh, little special thing in there. So that's what's in this guy with some of uh, Procure's just um, uh, bait oil that has the chartreuse coloring in it. We'll be adding that into the uh, the paddle flashers here in a minute. When do you use the paddle flashers and when do you use the triangle flashers? Primarily, you know, we're, we're doing the downriver trolling right now, um, running four rods with those. Sometimes I'll, I'll use a center rod um, just right out the back and I'll do a triangle because I don't want it moving because my other rods are already moving, um, you know, in, in the water column and those, those flashers are doing, you know, about a three foot circle or three foot roll or so. So I don't want to get them to anything too close because they'll end up tangling. So sometimes I'll run a triangle one straight out the back. Um, you know, I don't use a a lot of the triangle ones up here, but I use them sometimes here and there. And I'll run those with like the wiggle hoochie setup, which is kind of like this right here. Maybe. So this is Max Lure's wiggle, wiggle hoochie that I'll put on. Um, and that'll have a lot of action. That'll, that'll move around, especially a little bit longer leader, probably about five foot leader or so. And those will, um, those will that, that bait will actually move around, you know, about two feet. So it, that, that can be good too. So depends on how many people we got in the boat and how many, people, how many rods we can run, kind of how the depths we're running too. If I can run a little deeper water, if that's where the fish are at, then you know we can add a fifth rod or something like that. It makes it a little easier, but running four rods you know, is primarily the, the typical what we do. So this is the Hanford Reach uh, Vernita Bridge. Vernita Bridge is right there below us. Um, there's mm, about four boat launches up here. We're kind of the, the middle-ish one or so. So this is, uh, we're down from Mattawa or Desert Air. Desert Air is about five miles up. Uh, Mattawa is about 13 miles up, uh, basically north of us where we're at right now. All right, here we go. Uh, we got our uh, Max paddle flashers out. We're gonna open these guys up and put in our bait that we've got mixed up. I'm gonna ask you, do you ever pop the fin out and fish it without the fin? Nope, nope, I don't. I like the agitator fin. These actually do have a removable fin that you can um, take out and fish. They do have uh, a unique um, how they will perform in the water. Uh, with the fin, they'll typically do your roll, just like all the 360 flashers do. Um, these guys, without that, they will kind of act as a dodger. They'll roll to the right. They'll end up circling to the left. They'll, they'll really change any um, kind of what they do. I'm, I've never really messed with it too much. I heard some guys down uh, down the lower river did that and you know they still catch fish. They're still good. We're gonna run them so far right now with the, uh, the fin in there. So um, we're gonna take our scent that we showed in just a little bit. This, when you do this, I make mine kind of runny because I want the water that flows through this to wash this out. So I make mine kind of runny. I don't put necessarily a lot in there. I kind of, you know, move it around, things like that. So then we're just gonna snap this guy back together. And then we've got our water entrance hole up here. And then in the tail, we've got the, um, where the water's gonna flow. And it looks like you put a release on them. Yep, so this is Good Day Fishing's release. Um, I kind of had to do my own because these are a little bit, how these are designed being a little thicker. 
Um, they don't have a short swivel here, so you can buy these just from Good Day um, Fishing, just these uh, the release pieces. And then I made my own. I made them just a touch bit longer, but I believe they are working on trying to build one for that. We have sent them one, so they have one of our flashers. Even after the bait has left that, uh, all the tuna's gone, you still have the scent that is stuck to the inside of the scent flasher, which still allows it to be putting out some scents into the water. Yeah, the, the oils and the, the gels that we will use um, periodically, they will you know stick to the inside of that flasher, like Bob was saying. So even though the, if the tune is all rinsed out, you still got some, some kind of smell there. Okay, so we're gonna get ourselves turned around here and uh, we're gonna start trolling down, down river. Um, it's kind of a new technique that a lot of guys have uh, actually done and things like that. So that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna get after it. Welcome back to the Columbia River. I'm Justin Wolf. We're fishing an area of the Columbia known as the Hanford Reach, the only free flowing section of the Columbia River and a great place to troll for salmon. We're using Max Scent Flash paddle flashers with a downstream troll. What's the purpose of downriver trolling versus upriver? A lot of times down here, our current can get where it's just raging and you can't troll going upriver. So, you know, trolling this downriver, I can cover three times, four times the, um, the water that anybody else is just kind of sitting or trying to hold in one specific spot. So I'm trying to cover, cover area, cover different holes, um, you know, just trying to, trying to find fish that'll bite. What kind of speed do you do on your... You know, it's, it's not really a, a speed um, deal. It's more of watching my rods, seeing what my action of, of the flashers are doing. That's kind of what I'm more looking at than versus speed. Trolling upriver, yeah, you're looking at speed, um, still watching your stuff, but you're more, more speed is, uh, that's when that's crucial. He has our basic setup, slider, um, weight. This is, a, uh, this is a 24 inch bumper to our flasher, keeping the lead a little bit away um, to our spinner. These are the Cast King 10 foot six uh, Pro Troll rods. So we're gonna put this one out the back here. So we're, we're just looking for that, that you know, that, that flasher down there to, you know, be doing its circle. Probably need to speed up just a little bit here. You don't want to go too slow, but you got to gotta get, get, get your gear to work. So we'll go ahead and run this guy out and down she goes. How far back are you going with that? This one I'm going to run back probably about 40, 45 feet on the line counter. So now we're looking at that action of that rod. We want that pulsating action because that is showing that flasher, you know, looping, doing its circle, doing its job. So if it's not working, it'll kind of be dead. And when it's working, you'll have a nice, nice throbbing action is what you're looking for. Staggering these four rods, I'm running eight ounce out the back, 10 ounce on the sides. Um, so our back one ran, you know, 40, 45. Up here in the front, I'll run these ones um, 30, 35. So keeping them five to 10 off roughly. Um, on those and then they won't, uh, shouldn't tangle up. Although it's bound to happen sometimes, but. Fish, 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 fish. Get it, Bob, get it, Bob. All right. Anyway, we're only about halfway through the very first run here at noontime and we've already hooked up a fish. One of the funny things is, is we were questioning whether to run spinners or not because uh, the bite on the spinner seemed to slow down, but it looks like they might be back on them. You can see how the, the release you know works so that flasher is released like that. So that flasher's not going everywhere. Can you lift them up, Bob? Spinner 
and all. Nice fall king. We had to spend at least five minutes fishing. That was a lot of work. Double that guy up pretty good. The hook already popped out of its mouth. A lot of times they do that, especially when you get them in the net. So we seen in the net that the hook got pulled out, but actually it didn't. It actually went all the way through the, uh, the corner jaw gill right there. So that hook actually penetrated all the way through. That's the VMC hook that uh, Max Lure and myself uh, designed for VMC that uh, is on some of Max Lure's products. So that's the uh, Wedding Ring Salmon Tech Spinner, right out of the package. Eh, that's, that's a little bit small. Um, I mean, you gotta get through the nets to make it up here, so. Probably about 10, 12 pounds. Got our first fall king in a boat that took a Max Samatech salmon spinner behind a set flash paddle flasher, but we're looking for one more fish. Oh hey, yeah, look, there's some fish on the screen right there. So we're starting out here at noon today. Some fish on the screen that kind of just went through there. We just uh, actually landed one. I had uh, clients this morning, four guys this morning, brought them out and got them their limits this morning. And now we got uh, Bob from uh, Max Lure out on the boat with Jill from Max Lure on the boat. and. Uh, See if we can get uh, Jill another fish. So we're gonna change out that leader that we just caught a fish on. We got a little nick in it, so definitely don't want to run that if we get a, another chance at a, at a good fish. So Jill's gonna retie one here, um, and we we'd normally just use the you know Max Lures uh, leader length right out of the package. Uh, we just tied it right up and away we go. So those are probably about right about 36 inches for your leaders, that's about what you want to run your spinners. So she's going to do just a regular egg loop is how they actually tie them in the manufacturer there at Max Lure. It's really important to check your leaders in between fish because one little nick on there, your next fish is a big fish and it can pop that leader. So it's a really good tip. Just run your fingers over it, feel for any rough spots and it's been roughed up. It's a good idea to switch it out. So basically what it consists of is that's called a salmon tech hook with that unique bend to it to help hold the fish on. As you can see so far we haven't lost a fish or a bite. A tapered wedding ring bead, another round bead or wedding ring band with those clear rhinestones. Three more beads in the smile blade and there's your wedding ring salmon tech rig. All right, this was our back rod over here. Let's get this one back down. So we catch another fish. So this is the Max Lure scent flash paddle style. To open these up, you just push the tabs down and in on them and then it all comes apart. This allows you to put any type of scent in here. You put crushed bait, tuna fish, whatever, or you can take and uh, use one of our scent pads, just lay it in there that you can take with a bottle of scent and send it up. Another cool feature about this is this fin is removable, so you can actually fish it with or without the fin. With the fin in, this will do a great big roll, and if you uh, have it taken out like this, it will actually act like a dodger at the slower speeds and then start rolling with the weird action uh, at the uh, faster speeds. Another uh, cool thing about these is they can be set up uh, on a release where they come off, but one of the things we found is when it's not on a release and you got a big fish on here, it could put so much torque that this will sometimes pop open. So what we did is we put these little grooves in the back of the flasher. You can take one of these uh, ponytail bands and put it on there, and that'll keep it from opening up on you. Another cool feature of this that you can do is um, We've had people put rattles inside here to rattle it around. We've also take, took them and had them take uh, one of each uh, piece here, uh, the UV color and the chartreuse, and mix them together to get a different color combination going like this. And then just snaps down. And then you got a whole new different pattern going there. So we're gonna try the uh, triangle flasher, which is the scent flasher like what we're doing before that does open up as well. You can put your bait in here on this one, just like the paddle flashes we're running. So we're gonna we're gonna bait that up and give that a try with uh, Max's uh, wiggle hoochie. So we're gonna throw our bait that we've got made up in here. Again, same thing with these ones. You don't you don't need a lot in these, folks. 
A lot of people put too much in them and they, they overpack them. You don't want to do that. You don't need to. They go nice, nice and easy, nice, nice together. Just like that. So the reason why we're gonna run the uh, wiggle hoochie with this uh, triangle flasher is you'll see here if we can get it down in the water a little bit, this wiggle hoochie will dart all over the place and it'll start moving, moving all over. We gotta probably speed up a little bit. Now you can see it going a little bit, but it'll, it'll move all over the place. You can see that guy back there moving. So that's what you're trying to do is trying to make the fish mad to come up and grab hold of it. Let's try that and see what that does for us. Talking about you can fish these with the fin or without the fin. When do you decide to not use the fin? You know, down here at the Hanford Reach where we're fishing, we've got a lot of heavier current. And the heavier current kind of um, makes it float a little bit, doesn't keep it tracking true. We're running one right now and we're just kind of watching it, playing with it. I think personally better, these are going to work a little bit better on um, like Brewster Pool or maybe even um, up at Inead, up out of Wenatchee, you know, where, it's, where you're not getting all that heavy and really different oddball current like we see down here at the reach. Fish, 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 fish. Yep, all four up. Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying today's episode from the Columbia River, where we're after fall kings. Now, we're using some new products from Max Lure. In particular, the one that's working today is this paddle flasher. It's a great flasher, not only because you can fill it with scent, but it's also just a great flasher, even if you don't have scent in it. And for besides trolling spinners like the Salmon Tech, I think they're gonna be great for herring, or for the new Spinfish by Yakima Bait, and of course, Brad Superbaits. And then also the Triangle Flasher. Now, Triangle Flashers aren't used quite as much in an area like the Hanford Reach, but other places are very popular, and these things are gonna do well. Now, when you're using any type of rotating flasher, your chain swivels, or swivels in general, are incredibly important. These chain swivels by Fishfield do a great job for you. Now, a chain swivel is like six swivels put together, so if one of them has a piece of weed or debris tangled in it, the others are still gonna be working, so this is a really good way to go. Another option would be the Oregon Tackle Scent Chambers. They're built around a six bead bead chain swivel, 80 pound test, and they're completely enclosed in a plastic case, which means nothing can interfere with the action of your swivel. And you can fill them with scent. Now, I like these things so much that years ago, I created my own version of scent to fill these with, made by Procure, that um, is the right consistency. That's the main thing, and it's got a little secret ingredient too that really makes it work well. But the consistency, it, it releases out of scent chambers very well. Also great for filling any type of chambered bait, like a super bait or the new uh, Yakima bait spinfish or these uh, flashers. So, and they're made with water-soluble oils, which is a big key. Now, another option is the uh, half-ass free slide spreader. Now, what's great about these is they come with a bead chain swivel that locks into the tube, which makes up the spreader. So what that means is that your line twist won't go back up into your main line, which can be a problem with this type of fishing. These are very popular. Also, for leader material, you can't go wrong with the salmon and steelhead fluorocarbon from P-Line. This stuff is super strong, invisible to the fish, but mainly it's incredibly abrasion resistant, which means you're gonna lose fewer fish. Now, let's go back to the Columbia River at the Hanford Reach and see if Jill can't get that fish in the boat. Yep, all four up. The same rod we just hooked up on. Not even quarter way through our troll again, hooked up again. I take it that fish is bigger than the one I had, right, Jill? Always. <laughs> the first fish is always smallest. My fish was actually larger than yours, Jill. Mine was prettier.
got to watch out for these guys. They get some pretty good teeth, these fall fish do. Sewed up right in the jaw, just like you want. So we've got our uh, Pro Filet fish board here that I've got set up on the boat um, with the Scotty extensions to the bottom um, on here. So, you know, flaying quite a few fish. You know, I don't have to bend over. You can see I'm, you know, this is up here in working condition for me. So we don't have to bend over and hurt our back anymore. And um, we've got their, their new mat that they've got on there. Um, you know, these fish look a little colored. You know, we're, we're quite a ways up river and these are the fall kings and they're still great for eating or smoking. So one thing with these boards is they've got these hooks right here, yeah. which are for the gills, which makes it easy um, where you can slide the fish over and see, now I can hold it one hand and then that fish is locked in there. I mean, I'm kind of pulling on it. You can see that it's hooked in there. So it'll make it easier for me to fillet. Hold the fish right there. Makes it nice and easy, not going anywhere. Do the same to the other side. Okay, so these mats are really, you see they hold all the gunk kind of in there, but they're super easy to clean. Just you wash down, you can rinse them out just in the water or use your wash down pump. You'll see, you can just rinse them off nice and nice and easy. They come pretty clean. I will take some soap and um, scrub them down. No one, no bacteria left on them, but you can see just like that, it's pretty well, pretty well clean. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing. <laughs>